Now, uh, let's have a, a look on the tools we use to diagnose the uh, GERD. <clears throat> Actually, the main tool uh, uh, do exist here on the bottom of the table. It's the BVI trial test. Um, this is the main diagnostic tool we use. Yet, at some point, we need to have an EGD for the patient. Uh, EGD actual sensitivity is uh, low, like 60%, and uh, the yield, uh, you'll see only 20% of the EGDs with the uh, erosive esophagitis, while mainly above 50% will have NERD, which is a normal endoscopic finding despite the typical symptoms. The indications of, GER, uh, of uh, EGD in GERD are uh, when you have ALARP symptoms, uh, be your PPI trial failed, or atypical symptoms of suspic suspicious etiology, and those uh, need to go for surgical uh, treatment. Uh, regarding the uh, erosive esophagitis, um, uh, the endoscopy will, will demonstrate reflux esophagitis and, uh, as a sufficient proof for the diagnosis. Um, uh, sometimes you have a false false positive findings that uh, mimics the erosive esophagitis. Uh, bear in mind, uh, pill esophagitis is one of these main uh, differentials and also uh, esophagitis esophagitis with strictures. And at this point you need to treat the patients as if they uh, have um, uh, refractory GERD, so you, you do pH monitoring on PPI. Um, usually the appearance uh, of the, uh, of the uh, erosive esophagitis um, comes in uh, four grades uh, which lie under the, lies under the uh, Los Angeles classification. Um, uh, all of the grades, the four grades, will have one or more mucosal breaks. The point is that the A is the only one that have uh, breaks less than 5 millimeters, while the rest, B, C, D, have breaks more than 5 millimeters. Um, the difference between the A and the B uh, uh, is the is the size of the of the length or the of the uh, mucosal break, while both of them have no continue continuity between the folds. Uh, B, C, and D, you def uh, both of them have continuity between at least two folds, yet uh, C grade have uh, less than 75% uh, of the esophageal uh, circumference involvement, uh, and the D have more than 75% of the esophageal circumference involvement. Um, we put the manometry and the barium swallow here uh, just uh, for the purpose of the comparison. Uh, we have a legendary test like the uh, Bernstein test, which acid installation, they, they, they put acid in the esophagus and they, then they uh, 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 watch out for the, uh, the symptoms. Uh, this is no longer used anymore. Uh, also, the gastric uh, gastroesophageal scintigraphy is an outdated test. No need to discuss about it. Um, uh, barium only helps uh, when you have uh, other etiology uh, that you need to rule out, like uh, rings, uh, strictures, or, or hiatal hernia. That might help with the diagnosis. The rule of manometry in GERD is uh, actually uh, the, the indications I put it here. Uh, it's mainly pre-op when you uh, are about to send the patient for uh, surgical fund duplication. You need to do a manometry just to rule out um, um, an existing um, pre-op uh, dysmotility uh, disorder. Also, post-op when uh, you when you, when you have a patient with uh, a persisting dysphagia, you need to send the patient for ma for manometry. But actually, you first do an EGD. And um, maybe you also need to do a parium swallow. If both are negative, you go and do uh, um, uh, a manometry. Um, uh, also, uh, non-cardiac chest pain is one of the indications uh, to do a manometry when you have a normal uh, EGD and normal uh, 24 pH study. Okay, the main other tool uh, is the 24-hour uh, ambulatory uh, pH monitoring which have a high sensitivity actually. 
um, uh, the concept here is that you place a probe um, it's either using the uh, manometry transducer probe to uh, uh, confirm the location or you might uh, use the step up approach uh, with detecting the uh, the the less uh, the uh, sorry the higher uh, pH while you're going up in the suffix. Um, actually, there is no relation between the amount of reflux and the presence of the esophagitis or the uh, symptoms uh, severity. Uh, here, the uh, the finding the, the main the main finding that you are looking for to confirm that uh, your patient have GERD is that uh, you detect uh, uh, pH um, uh, that is uh, less than 4 uh, for more than 4% of the time of the 24 hours uh, precisely 4.2% uh, with the, uh, using the symptoms index uh, which we discussed it before which is the uh, symptoms well, the number of symptoms with reflux uh, divided by the total uh, number of symptoms if you have uh, more than 50 percent you have a positive symptoms index if you have uh, less than 50 percent that's a normal uh, symptoms index um, and the indications of the pH monitoring are mainly uh, the uh, uh, the patients uh, uh, with the refractory uh, symptoms that these, these, these symptoms that uh, we discussed before we do them on uh, PPI and uh, patients uh, are going for surgery you do these patients are, are on off PPI. Uh, the other two indications you see here, there's uh, two points for board. Uh, patients who have a typical uh, extraesophageal symptoms uh, like uh, laryngitis and patients with fr frequent atypical chest pains. Um, and of course, uh, we know now that we, the patient we do EGD and we found nothing in EGD, we call them NERD. We need to send these patients for pH uh, monitoring study, um, the uh, the uh, the other new technology that uh, is being used now is the uh, combined ambulatory twenty four hours uh, pH monitoring with impedance. The impedance uh, uh, is used to uh, 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 detect the non acid reflux mainly, and uh, here the, the the solid food challenge does. Um, uh, show on the uh, uh, high resolution image uh, how the uh, the polars have been uh, uh, transferred from the upper uh, uh, through the lower into the stomach uh, sphincters um, uh, the main the main issue here that uh, this uh, combined study with evidence uh, do help does help uh, diagnose of non acid reflux after a normal 24 pH study HDM manometry uh, this is mainly what you need to know about uh, the diagnostic tools of the uh, GERD. Now let's move uh, a little bit down with the management of the uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, the mainstay of the treatment is actually the, the, the proton bond inhibitors. Um, uh, though the uh, lifestyle modification uh, have uh, some um, Implication. What well, the studies actually showed uh, that uh, there is a benefit. Um, uh, let's focus on re uh, weight reduction, which is the most effective measure and is a proven benefit. Um, also, uh, weight reduction through uh, surgery uh, has been proven uh, benefit as well. Uh, elevating the head of the bed has been proven benefit. And avoiding food three hours before bedtime has proven benefit in, uh, in, in reducing the symptoms. Um, uh, you acid neutralizers and uh, HT, H2 uh, blockers actually are not that kind of reliable uh, treatment. So again, the PPI is the mainstay of the treatment. And uh, the healing rate is more than 80%. And uh, this medication needs to be given at least uh, 30 minutes before the meal. Remember that the PPIs uh, are uh, potassium, hydrogen, AT base blockers. Um, the main side effects of the uh, using the PPIs are, are diarrhea and abdominal pain and headaches. Um, there is insignificant increase in the gastrin level. So whenever you encounter a patient with uh, an increased gastric uh, level on PBI, you just DC the PBI and recheck it later on uh, after a couple of weeks. 
um, uh, the main side effects of the PPI uh, 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 is a uh, community acquired pneumonia that develops on the long term um, uh, and the C. diff and the uh, sepal that develops on the long term use along with the fundic uh, gland bullets of the stomach which have no malignant potential. There is some debate about the uh, uh, hip fracture and osteoporosis. Actually, uh, patients who uh, do not have uh, a risk or never had uh, uh, a fracture uh, secondary to osteoporosis w wouldn't have a significant risk when they use a PPI. PPI also uh, have a minimal impact on uh, the absorption of uh, vitamin B12, calcium, and iron, and, uh, and the least affected um, uh, mineral here is the magnesium. This is surprisingly a bold question. Um, there actually no significant interaction now that we know with the Blavix. So um, you go ahead and use the Blavix uh, while the patient is being treated on PPI. Uh, another uh, point, uh, point that comes on the board is that the PPI takes a lansoprazole is the only flexible PPI. I, I mean it can be given regardless of the meal. Um, uh, regarding the other other uh, uh, treatment modalities is the mechanical prevention of reflux. Uh, we mean here the surgery, um, which have comparable uh, 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 outcome uh, to the PPI, which almost uh, nine, uh, 80 to 90 percent. Uh, you need to consider the Rowan Y surgery, uh, which is the surgery of choice in patients with GERD uh, uh, who are morbidly obese and have hazel hernia. Uh, remember that uh, GERD with obesity, you need, uh, the patient needs to be at least uh, uh, of a BMI of 35 uh, plus comorbidity or more than 40. Um, which also, uh, the surgery with the treatment is always higher than uh, treatment alone. Um, uh, uh, patients who mostly will benefit from the uh, surgical intervention are people who have good PPI response pre-op and patients with good correlation between uh, either acid or non-acid uh, reflux symptoms. Uh, patients who ha show uh, least uh, uh, um, response are the patients who lack response to PPI and lack evidence of reflux and female gender patients. Um, you never do a surgery uh, to a patient who have esophageal dysmetality or have uh, hypersensitive esophagus functional disorders and who have an extra uh, esophageal symptoms not responding to PPI. Um, remember that you need to do all the time manometry before all the patients going for surgery and pH monitoring for, for patients who never showed uh, erosive uh, esophagitis. The main uh, some, uh, uh, complications are the dysphagia. Uh, usually it fades by time, but persists only in 5%, and at that time you, you need to do an EGD. You might even need to dilate the patient or rule out synophilic of jets at that time. Uh, remember that 60% of the patients after surgery will require either surgical revision or uh, PPI over time. Um, um, uh, Basically, currently, there is no recommendation regarding the endoscopic therapies, either suturing, artificial, mechanical barrier, the speed bomb, and whatever. Um, here, I put some uh, few words on the uh, PPI uh, step down approach. Usually, uh, the, the patient should be weaned off PPI um, as possible. Uh, that's the main concept about it. When you when you wean up the patient from uh, wean up the patient from the PPI, you need to do this gradually, uh, because there is a rebound uh, hypersecretion of the uh, gastric acid after you would if you draw the PPI suddenly. Uh, uh, just a few words on H. pylori and GERD. Remember that uh, H. pylori uh, decreases the risk of GERD and erosive esophagitis, though. Uh, H. pylori eradication does not cause GERD and doesn't cause the, uh, or make you need to increase the dose uh, to control the GERD. Remember that bile acid and pancreatic uh, reflux uh, are the most harmful uh, type of, uh, of uh, reflux. Thank you.